Greetings, I'm Professor K, and in this short video presentation, we're going to see how we go about using the Shodan search engine to search for vulnerable databases. Please ensure that you use this lab responsibly. Attempting to access any system you do not own or have permission to access is illegal. This lab is meant to be used for educational and research purposes only. There are a number of database applications that you can acquire that do not require authentication. That is to say, they come out of the box wide open. As a pen tester or as a digital forensics investigator, you may want to find if your client has such a database exposed to the Internet. This is the great thing about the Shodan search engine. It can give us the information that we can take to the client to show them that, yes, you do have a vulnerability issue with your database. And this is how we're going to fix it. And this is not just for pen testers and digital forensic investigators. This search engine can also be used by a homeowner to see if their network is exposed. So to begin this lab, we're going to be looking for Mongo database server information. And we're going to pull this information that has been cataloged by the Shodan search engine pulled in from the server's banner information. So I'm going to look for MongoDB space server space information. This is all in quotes because it is more than one word. I'm then going to give it a space. We're going to type in the word port colon. And now we're going to type in the port number that the Mongo database uses, which is 27017. We're going to give that a space and a dash authentication because we're looking for databases that are not secure. Now these commands that I'm putting into the search engine for the query are also located inside of the lab file. And so let's go ahead and launch that search. And right away it comes back and it tells us that there are 18,772 instances of the MongoDB database located in the world that are not secure. Now if you would like to go up and see this in a physical map, you can just click on Maps here. And it'll take you out. And it's going to show you where each one of these databases are actually located in the world. Now the map is only going to return a maximum results of 1,000. It takes a while for the map to update, so do be patient. Once the map shows all the locations where the MongoDB database is currently located, well, you can just click on those locations and you can start to zoom in. Now back at our search results, we can scroll down here and we can begin to see all these different databases. And you'll quickly note that a lot of them Quite a few of them have already been compromised. And you can tell this just by looking at the banner information that is returned where it says, Read me to recover your data. Now, if you would like to see that message in its entirety, all you have to do is just click on the IP address of that server. So let's just click on this IP address of this server that's located in China. And what you want to do next is just click on the port number. So if you click on the port number that belongs to the database, it'll take you right into the database. And you can scroll down here and you can actually see the results that are being returned to you. Unfortunately, this one has been totally compromised, so there's nothing really to see. The Mongo database also comes with a GUI version called the Mongo Express. And you can locate these vulnerable servers just by trying to establish a connection and having that results returned to you with the HTTP error page. In this case, we're looking for an error of 200 OK. So if we query the following information, and I'm going to go ahead and input this into the search engine itself, set-cookie colon mongo-express equals wrapped in quotes, 200 OK, we should be able to get a result. And here we see that the Mongo Express comes back to us. Again, if I click on any of these IP addresses in here, for instance, 
and I find the port number that's currently being used by the Mongo database, you can see that I'm taken right into the database. Now another search filter that we can use is product. So I'm going to go up here and we're going to look for another database type called elastic. And to find this, I'm going to use the search filter product colon followed by what it is I want to search for and that is followed by the port number that the Elastic database uses. So I've typed in product colon Elastic space port colon and we know that Elastic uses port 9200. Go ahead and conduct this query. And again you can see the search results over here on the left where it's broken down by country, it's broken down by organization, top operating systems, and the top versions of the database in question. And again, to access this database, all we do is just click on the IP address. And now we're going to find the port number that is assigned to the Elastic database, which is 9200. And if we click on that, it'll take us right into the database. And down here at the bottom, you can see that the results come back telling us that there is an Elastic database located on this server. And if we click on this little arrow here, it'll take us right into that database without any authentication. And there you are. Just about anything that does not use authentication can be accessed in this manner using the Shodan search engine. So whether it's a database or it's a server or whatever it might be if it's not using authentication and we know the port number we can search for that item or that device on the internet and we can attempt to gain access to it to verify that yes it is vulnerable in this short video presentation we looked at just two well-known database types that do not require authentication now there are other databases out there as well and there's also a lot of different devices on the internet that have not been configured for authentication or are using the default authentication that comes out of the box. So you can search for this information for your client or if you're conducting some type of digital forensics investigation to get to the answer of why something happened and how it could have been prevented. And so that's going to conclude this short video presentation on how we go about using the Shodan search engine to search for vulnerable databases that are exposed to the internet without any authentication. So if you have any questions or you have any concerns about any of the information that was presented to you in this short video presentation, please do not hesitate to reach out, contact your instructor, and I'll see you in my next video.